Welcome back to the Red Dice Stories. I'm John, and a couple of people were kind enough to send us voicemails. So we're going to get straight to answering and listening to those after the theme music. And first up, we have a series of calls from longtime friend of the show, Jason of the Nerds RPG Variety Cast. Highly advise you to check out his podcast. There'll be a link to it in the description. So let's see what Jason's got to say. Hey, guys. Happy 2022. Great to hear you podcasting again. Thank you to Joe Salvador for giving us so many great recommendations. And for Joe Richter, yeah, I don't know. Charm person is not permanent, you know, in any version of the game, to my knowledge. I believe it, every version could be gotten rid of by Dispel Magic. And then it's really weak in a number of versions where it's just making people your friend. And if they attack you or cause you to be attacked, it automatically is canceled. So it just depends which version you're looking at. But it, it's a pretty powerful spell. I'll give them that. Anyhow, I do hope that you sort out that faction system a little bit. I'd love to hear you guys do an example of that but all in all i'm looking forward to whatever you do in 2022 wish you the best and i'll talk to you soon thanks very much jason apologies for being so late to get around to answering that when jason was talking about charm person he's referring to an earlier conversation that was going on amongst a number of the anchorites the the people who podcast about rpgs on anchor about whether charm person's too powerful you know whether mechanics that put someone out of the game for a bit are a good thing, a bad thing, you know, and that conversation went round and round for a little while. And I think I pretty much agree with Jason, to be honest. It depends very much on the version you're using. Uh, they all sort of vary a little bit. That They can be quite powerful. Sometimes it's not. It very much depends. And again, I know that seems like a bit of a, a cop-out answer, but there you go. It depends on how you use it as well. Hey, Han and John, Jason here. Really enjoyed the Screaming Skull episode. I think that's the great kind of little folklore thing you can put in your games to make them stand out. Things like the Screaming Skulls or, you know, other little things that may, maybe aren't a major, you know, it's not a major opponent. It's not necessarily something to fight, but just little weird, flavorful, flavorful things to put in your game. So thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Hopefully we see a lot of Screaming Skulls in games to come. Uh, in different games because too many would you know ruin it but I, I really like the idea and I really like that kind of thing that little kind of thing whether it's Screaming Skull or whether it's the you, you know little fake creature that, that that'll cobble your shoes at night when you, you leave cookies out for it or whatever right but, but I think those kind of little things really add something to the game yeah, entirely agree, Jason. And that when he talks about screaming scores, Jason's referring to an older episode there. We used to regularly, sort of last year, do monster episodes where myself and Hannah would sort of look at a monster from folklore or from a and d book, and then we'd talk about how you could use it in your game and stuff like that. We're hoping to get around to doing some of those again, although schedules have been a little bit difficult to organize at the moment so they're probably not going to be quite as regular as they once were but we're still hoping to do them in the future yeah absolutely right jason i entirely agree adding these little sort of folkloric elements can really bring a sort of sense of like very similitude and a bit of extra like texture to your campaign world and it's not a very difficult thing to do it's not difficult to look at something in folklore and just tweak it a little bit to give it a slant for your particular campaign world and then drop it in as like a, a fairy story or a sort of legend that everyone knows about and it really can make your world feel lived in and like a real in inverted commas place hey john jason here enjoyed your summoning monsters episode um i recently was in a game of pathfinder run by joe richter of hindsightless and we were fighting this demon that could summon another demon luckily we're able to take it out before it did summon more demons because the problem is when it summons another demon it could summon another demon like it and then of course that demon could summon another demon like it and and they'll quickly spiral out of control what made it dangerous was this demon also has can create a cloud this miasma kind of cloud of nauseous gas that lets players only they can do one move action that's it and they can't do act 
you know, take take other actions. So, luckily, a couple of the characters, a couple of dwarves, were able to resist the the nausea and, and take, took it out before it could summon the other demon. But between the disabling cloud and be able to summon other demons, pretty tough monster. So, fun stuff. Thanks very much, Jason. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty hairy combat. All right. And in a few moments, we've got Joe Richter, who is going to mention the very same game. Now, I seem to remember when it comes to like demons, like gating in other demons, I seem to remember there were some rules that the ones that had been summoned couldn't use their summoning abilities whilst they were themselves being summoned. I might be wrong. It's been time since I've used any like sort of AD and D demons or like 3.5 Pathfinder, whatever, demons or devils. In a game, so let me know, folks, if I've got that wrong. But I definitely remember there was some sort of like debate around it going back years. But yeah, even if it's not an official rule, I'd probably say that like gated in creatures can't then sort of instantly use their ability to summon more creatures. Otherwise, you've got like an exponential army building up rather than just sort of like, oh, it's a cool, like, here comes some reinforcements vibe. So that's probably what I do. But that combat, especially with that weird, like, nauseating cloud that, like, sort of halves the amount of stuff you can do, if I'm getting this right, that does sound pretty hectic. Anyway, Jason, uh, thank you very much for all your calls. Very much appreciate it. And now we're going to turn over to Joe Richter from the Hind Sightless podcast. Again, a link in the description of this episode. So, take it away, Joe. Hey, John, I really enjoyed your episode on summoning monsters uh, or monsters who summon things, <laughs> not summoning monsters to fight for you. Anyway, dude, I was also really excited to hear that Hannah's going to be hopping back on the mic here sometime, hopefully. But yeah, dude, so uh, in in Pathfinder, there are a lot of monsters that summon stuff and there. I really enjoy them as well. Like demons, for instance, most demons have a percentile chance of summoning more demons. They can do that like once a day. So at, it's it's just awesome, right? At the start of a fight, it's like, dude, they gotta they gotta bring in some friends. I don't know, uh, but anyway, man, good stuff. Can't wait for the next one. Peace out. Thanks very much, dude. Greatly appreciate it. I've got to admit, although I'm not a Pathfinder player per se, that game does sound pretty damn cool. I'm not gonna lie. And yeah, as for Hannah getting back on the mic, this bonus episode should be going out on Wednesday, sort of my time, and there will be two episodes with myself and Hannah, one on the Thursday and one on the Friday, where we're talking about potentially a few situations where, you know, if you squint at them, you turn the light down, etc. It might be okay to fudge dice a little in D&D. Or maybe not. You'll have to listen to the episode to find out. But yeah, we both had great fun getting together and recording that. And it was nice that our schedule synced up enough for once for us to be able to do that. We're hoping to do some more episodes. Also do a few more of the monster episodes. But we're having to sort of fit them in around our work hours at the minute. Which, as you can imagine, with everything going on, are pretty chaotic at the moment. But we're, we're doing our best. So thank you very much for that. And yeah... Summoning monsters, absolutely love them. They always put me in the mind of the old, you know, the old like cheesy like eighties kung fu movies where the the hero is about to face off against the bad guy and he throws down like the ninja smoke bombs and then like some henchman that you hadn't previously seen burst out of the smoke and it goes from like oh we're going to take on this one guy to suddenly like oh no he's got his crack cadre of like bodyguards around him and it always sort of puts me in mind of that when like summoned creatures are bought in and it's something i really enjoy especially as a way to sort of throw a bit more sort of interest and excitement into a final encounter and also a sort of a bit of a ticking clock jeopardy uh, as uh jason was saying when it comes to your uh, pathfinder game you know where luckily those dwarves were able to deal with a demon before it could gate in a load of other demons so again ticking clock nice bit of tension there i think these sort of summoning these creatures that can summon other creatures add a, an awful lot to games and combat scenarios. And also there's an interesting roleplay potential there, you know, like how far does this summoning go, where does the summon creature come from, etc. Depending on how much you want to lean into that. So, 
there we go for this small bonus episode it just remains for me to thank my two wonderful callers jason of the nerds rpg variety cast and joe richter of the hindsightless podcast again there's a links to both their podcasts in the description of this episode highly recommend you give them a look and if you want to be featured in perhaps a future bonus episode yourself you can leave us a voicemail message using speakpipe or anchor there's a link in the description or you could just send us an email to rdrpgpodcast at gmail.com. Like I say, you might be featured in a future episode yourself. But until we see you again, take care, stay safe, and whatever you're playing, have fun. See you next time.